My name is Mervyn McRoberts. Um, we're farming here in Ballandere, uh, County Antrim. We're, it's an autumn calving system. We're, we're, we're going that way just because we like the calves being born in the, in the autumn, early in the autumn. They thrive well. It suits our production system. Um, we can produce a lot of milk off forage in the winter time. We have more control over the nutrients going into the cows and their nutrition. And for fertility reasons, I think that's better. We can get more cows back in calf quicker. We, we put them all to grass. We only milk twice a day. We put them to grass in the springtime, and hopefully 90, 95% of the cows are back in calf at that stage. Currently, the herd is doing uh, 9,600 litres off about three tonnes of meal. This winter, the forage quality hasn't been quite as good, so we're feeding probably about 3.12 or 3.15 tonnes of meal. There is still 3,200 litres coming from forage. Fat and protein, we're probably sitting at about 4.4% fat and 3.51 protein, which equates to about 782 kilos of combined fat and protein. I came home to the farm here in 1985. At that stage, my father and my brother were farming probably milking 70, 80 cows and taking all the meal stock through to either forward stores or beef. My father bought a couple of parcels of land in the late 80s. It meant there was a yard in one of the, on the farm so we could uh, increase the beef production. And then jump forward 15 years to the mid 2000s. There was two young families on the ground so the decision was made to split the farm. My brother focused more on the beef and I focused on the dairy end. In 2007 we put this shed up. The, the old uh, buildings were not just fit for purpose. So we put a new unit up for 120 cows, 16 point parlour and the story stories that was required. My earliest benchmarking figures are from March 08. At that stage we were producing 7,600 litres of milk per head of two and a half tonnes of meal, probably 2,400 from forage and fat and protein would have been about 4.39 and 3.31 accordingly, which equates to 600 kilos of fat and protein. So that's where we've come from to where we are now in a space of 12, 15 years probably. Um, bull selection, uh, if we're choosing bulls, I think the main focus would have been high percentages of fat and protein or weights of fat and protein. We want a cow that's 650 to 700 kilos, don't want any bigger. We want a cow that's got good capacity, so to be honest, I rely very heavily on Ivan from AI Services. He knows the bulls better than I do, so I mean, he'll, he knows the sort of cow we're looking. We want a cow that's good in her legs and feet. It's going to produce a lot of milk, of quality milk, so I leave it up to him. Nine times out of ten, I'll pick a couple of bulls out of the catalogue and I'll maybe use one of them and he'll put forward three or four other bulls that are probably better. The specific criteria we are looking for is just positive fat and protein percentages. We bring that through. Production has never been high on the list, plus 300 kilos. When we moved in here, we've been in here 15 years. We've gone from 7,600 up to 9,600. So I mean, better comfort for the cows, better feeding is brought through and I suppose better genetics as well. But as long as there's good fat and protein coming through, but it's taken a long time for us to get from where we were to to where we are now with 782 kilos. So, I mean, it takes time. I'd say out of every five years, we'll use a team of bulls that are positive either for fat and protein percentages or heavy weights. Maybe one year in those four or five, we'll maybe improve feet and legs, lower stature, length and teeth. Some, some small characteristics I've noticed, I'll say to Ivan, we'll put a bull in the team to try and counteract that. Milk solids is important. At 45 pence a litre, milk solids isn't really that important, but most months we're, we're probably picking up two to three pence of a bonus on our milk quality. When milk drops to 30p, that's 10% on top of your milk check, so it, it is important then, but it's a slow thing to bring through. I feel it takes time, and uh, we've been doing it for that long now. I'm not going to let it drop, so we will keep going for more milk uh, quality than, than volume. We've set this last four or five years from 9.5 to probably 9.8, 9,800 litres, so it depends on forage quality and just grazing but uh, the, the fat and protein is rising slowly. 15 years ago when we moved into this shed, my target was to put a million litres off 120 cows. I think we achieved that after about year four, but that was done through improved fertility. When we moved in here first, we were probably calving eight months of the year from September through to May. Uh, we, we had different batches of heifers on the ground, which meant you had to sort of serve them in the summer with a bull and with a stock bull running with the cows, which meant with cold cows coming through that we didn't really want to come through. So. 2010, we made the decision to get rid of the stock bulls, focus slowly, uh, solely on AI, and we put in a heat detection system, and it's been a, probably three or four years, it slowly improved. We got more and more of an autumn calving base. At that time, we'd have probably served with Holstein for 10 weeks, until we had about 80 animals PD positive to Holstein, and then moved on to beef straw. 2008, uh, for calving pattern, we'd have calved 50% of the herd pre-Christmas and 50% of the herd from January through to May time. This last year we've calved 80% of the herd from the last week in August to the end of October. Uh, the remaining 20% from November, December, th there's always one or two stragglers in, in January. It's taken a lot of time and effort. We, we have a very good vet that comes in, very proactive in the, on the farm. 
and she set up protocols that we, we carry out and it's taken four or five years to get down to where we are now. PLA, I mean, I looked through the records last night, we have cows here with negative PLA and yet they're producing 10,000 litres of milk of good quality and they're probably standing in the herd maybe seven, eight, nine, ten years. Um, the average PLA for the herd is 267. Obviously going forward, the, the end calf heifers, their average PLA is 500 and the calves on the ground this year, their average PLA is 522. I don't know whether it's, uh, I think you actually have to look at the actual figures on the ground and see what the cows are actually doing. Uh, PLA is okay, yes it's a guidance, but I wouldn't rely heavily on it or completely on it. We usually pick probably the most three to four bulls. Um, if we're trying to counteract the trait, if they say for teat length, uh, we noticed that four or five years ago there was one bull put in the team just to lengthen teeth. So and say if a cow came in short of the teeth, that was the bull using her. The heifers get a different bull um, solely for the heifers and then all two bulls just sweep across the rest of the cows. The process is, is not done overnight, so I mean it takes year after year of continually topping up and adding more fat and protein onto the cows. It's taken us 15 years to lift them 180 kilos in weight and hopefully in the next 10 years we'll, we'll continue to lift them, but it's, it's something that's ongoing. We'll still always add fat and protein above everything else. Coming from the sheds we were in, the cubicle size, we never really bred for a massive cow. We wanted a, a medium-sized cow with good capacity for forage. Going forward, we've noticed that the heifers are getting bigger and we have started to reduce stature again in some of them. I say 650, 670, 680 kilos is where I want to be at with a good body capacity to eat a lot of forage.